So despite gaming companies receiving millions of dollars in subsidies and abusing copyright laws to maintain their position in the industry, we need the government to step in and fix the gaming industry. What? Are you serious? So for starters, Senator John Hawley recently introduced a bill called the Protecting Children from Abusive Games Act, which aims to protect minors from games with loot boxes and microtransactions. Is this what we've really come to? I mean, just to think that 10 years ago the game community would have rioted if the government stepped in to regulate video games on the basis that they lead to violence. But now, because we have loot boxes, all of a sudden the gaming commentator crowd and the community as a whole are now pro-regulation at the drop of the hat, and I'm not buying this. There are many problems with regulating loot boxes that I'm surprised that the gaming community hasn't picked up on. One notable thing the community has been talking about for the past year or so is that games are becoming so expensive to make that microtransactions are a necessary evil to prevent the cost of games from going above $60. Although I've actually proved this false in an older video of mine, the community seemed to forget about this. If the price were to go up, which is definitely possible, then when accounting for cumulative inflation, the average $60 game would probably cost around $100. Even today, $60 is a hefty price tag, so selling $100 a game will be even harder. As a result, developers will most likely create free-to-play games, much like what's happening now with Fortnite and Apex Legends. However, the companies still need to make money. So take a wild guess at what they're going to do. Yep, they're going to sell microtransactions. So in trying to escape them, we're potentially making them a necessity. So good job, gamers. Sure, they won't be loot boxes, but I'll get to that in a moment. For those who haven't seen it, here's an outline of the bill, and just from looking at it, I can already see a range of problems. Firstly, the bill targets anyone under 18, but that includes 15 to 17 year olds, people who can drive, apply for jobs, and even understand politics and philosophy. On the other hand, anyone under 15 doesn't even make their own income, so the only way a person would have access to these types of games would be through their parents, especially in raid games, since you need to be 18 to legally buy one. Sure, people have used Candy Crush as, as an example of predatory practices targeting children, but again, most people in this age group don't make their own money, and the ones that do are already mature enough to handle the responsibility of fucking driving. Let's also not forget that Yu-Gi-Oh! is a prime example of premium RNG that's existed for two decades now. Two fucking decades without any noticeable harmful effects on people. Scrolling down a bit, we see what Holly defines what loot boxes and pay to win as. Loot box is pretty straightforward, although there's no such thing as partially randomized, since either something's randomized or it isn't, but pay to win is vague. What is competitive advantage? Shooters constantly release map packs or expansions with guns that have an advantage in one area compared to the rest of the weapons. That's just a part of shooters. Does that count as a competitive advantage? Even if that did, the outline explicitly states that the regulation pertains to microtransactions only. So now, what is a microtransaction? Plus, the outline only states that it targets multiplayer games, not single-player ones. So, you see the problem now? The bill is going to be inconsistent and will create a double standard. It won't even solve the practices like what Black Ops 4 and Fortnite are doing right now, where you can spend money on a pass that you can level up to get cosmetics, except Black Ops 4 actually has the option to skip those levels by paying even more money. The bill doesn't appear to stop this, so I'm going out on a limb and saying that developers will implement these systems if the, pill, if the bill passes. And lastly, these regulations will be enforced by the FTC, which the thought of the government having a foothold on the gaming industry should be terrifying. Like I said at the beginning of the video, game companies like EA are subsidized by the government for some magical fucking reason, and Nintendo can get away with suing a family for millions of dollars for sharing ROMs that they don't even sell anymore. Does anyone in the gaming community believe that the government won't expand its influence and won't worsen the problem? This bill will at best do nothing, since the industry has lived without microtransactions for decades, and at worst, you've just expanded your government's power over our lives. But Azure, we need these regulations to stop people from becoming addicted, especially the children who have access to mommy's credit card. Bullshit. These companies are simply selling a product that you voluntarily chose to buy. The burn of proof does not lie on the companies, the burn of proof lies on you. You need to explain to us why we should regulate something based on your lack of self-control or bad parenting skills. Seriously, consoles come with settings that can outright prevent people from making online purchases. Just use them. 
take some responsibility for your actions and stop buying these games. Now, I want to end this video with a question. If we need to regulate loot boxes because people lack self-control, then why should we expect people from that same population to properly control us? That's it. I'm done. There's my rant, and goodbye.